What's up and welcome to the single player experience. As always, I'm your host Sebastian Malden and in this episode, I'm talking about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet might be the most mixed I've been on a game in a very long time. It's one of the worst running AAA games that I can remember playing, but despite all that, it's a really fun time. So, why am I mixed on this game? Is it a good single player experience? I'll give you those answers and more right after the intro. DJ, start the intro, man. After 40 hours of exploring the Paldea region, I've seen almost everything this game has to offer. I've seen the highs and the lows of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and I can definitively state that this is the most fun I've had with a Pokemon game in about 20 years. The crazy thing about that statement is the fact that I can say that despite the numerous, and I mean numerous, negatives of the game. Now, let's dive into the ups and downs of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Let's start with the stars of the show themselves, the Pokemon. Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet look better than I've ever seen them. The game properly displays a Pokemon's physical features like their fuzziness, their rocky exterior, and even their sliminess to name a few features. For example, my Arcanine looks like a fuzzy canine. They absolutely nailed that aesthetic. Another thing I want to shout out is the roster for this game. There's a solid amount of Pokemon in the game and the newer ones for Gen 9 feel well designed and well thought out. While it can feel overwhelming to be introduced to so many new Pokemon, the game makes it easy to learn their strengths and their weaknesses. There's a decent amount of Pokemon from the older generations. For example, I came across several Pokemon from Gen 1 and it honestly felt like I was seeing a friend that I hadn't seen in a very long time. No lie, your boy went out of his way to collect and capture all the Gen 1 Pokemon that I came across. Yes, even the Magikarp. Now let's talk about the game's narrative. There are three main overall stories for this game. The classic tale in which you try to take down all the gym leaders and the Elite Four. One where you try to take down giant Pokemon to help your friend Arva find the Herba Mystica. And the final one in which you try to take down the bases and the organization known as Team Star. While none of the stories felt like a contender for the best narrative of 2022, they were solid enough that it kept me engaged. Each one had their own twist and I enjoyed that they all came together in a very satisfying way overall. I really want to shout out Team Star because they could have went the direction to where they made another Team Rocket knockoff but instead they gave a more thoughtful story about an organization that you're trying to take down that kind of had a lot of heart to the overall story. Now let's talk about the gameplay. The core gameplay is the same as the recent Pokemon games but with some new user friendly additions. You can still walk up to trainers or Pokemon that you want to battle and then the battle begins. The game however adds the ability to throw out your Pokemon into the open world and have them partake in an off the screen auto battle. This is a feature that is a game changer and saves a lot of time when you are trying to grind. I really enjoyed seeing this feature on display when you're trying to take down Team Star's bases. Instead of having you battle each of the underlings one by one, you simply throw out your first three Pokemon that you have on hand and they take on all the underlings Pokemon in the off the screen auto battles. It's a huge time saver and it allows you to get to the bases boss battles really quickly. Now let's talk about some of the features of this game. Some of the newer features felt like a step in the right direction and felt like well thought out quality of life decisions. For example, this game has an auto heal mechanic which is an absolute game changer and should be in every Pokemon game going forward. Let me explain, instead of you having to just click on potions over and over again to heal your squad, you can just go over to the Pokemon that you want to heal and simply hit the negative button. From there it just simply takes whatever you have on hand and automatically heals that Pokemon of its ailment and just heals it to 100% health. Another new feature that I really liked about this game is the fact that this game grants you the ability to craft TMs. 
this is a great addition and is much better than those ridiculous move teeters that you had to seek out in the previous games. It's also really cool that you can relearn any moves that your Pokemon previously knew at any point in the game, and it doesn't cost you anything. These are really great user-friendly features that add more freedom and control to create the team that you want at any given time. So you can't talk about this game, neither Pokemon Scarlet or Violet without mentioning the many flaws that this game has. So let's dive right into it. This game made it more evident than ever before that Pokemon games and the Pokemon franchise need the option to skip the tutorials. Many of us have played these games for decades at this point, so we don't need the 4-6 to six hour tutorial that's in Scarlet and Violet specifically. The fact that it takes that long to get into the game is truly egregious. One of the newer features that is absolutely the worst is the gym test. For those of you who don't know what the gym tests are, they're these terrible mini games that you have to complete before you challenge the gym leader. They are often a horrible, meaningless task that feels like they are just trying to pad the game out. I cannot stress this enough, they feel like a waste of time. For example, there's one where you have to roll a giant ball through a maze-like course into a basket, and another where you had to go around the town to find out the local's restaurant's secret menu order. Both were a complete and utter waste of time and feel like something that is just there, like I said earlier, to pad the game out with content. Now let's talk about the Snorlax in the room. You can only have an in-depth conversation about this game if you talk about its performance issues. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, and there's no easy way to say this, but this game runs like cold syrup at IHOP. It absolutely chugs, and nothing about the game's performance feels smooth. It honestly feels like you're moving in slow motion and you just simply get used to moving that way. I also want to point out that while you're playing this game you will often see and experience vast dips in the frame rate. This is evident in city areas especially where there are NPCs in the background. I've also experienced some crashes while playing the game. Two examples of this happened right after I beat the grass gym and when I beat the dark type version of Team Star. It was so annoying that I had to go through those tasks over again due to the game crashing. It's not the end of the world, but it is a very solid annoyance. Another weak aspect of the game is the open world that you actually explore. While you can explore a vast open world, and that's fine and dandy, but a lot of it seems empty other than the Pokemon occupying the area. You know that there are other trainers out there in the world, but besides like the city area or very close to the city area, they're often so scattered that they're hard to find. You often come across areas where there's just emptiness around you, where you can't see any people or trees there, just random Pokemon. So should you play Pokemon Scarlet or Violet? I listed out all the flaws of this game, for which there are many, and I do mean many, but you want to know what the funny thing is? This game is absolutely terrible performance wise, but it's the most fun that Pokemon has been in a decade plus. The truly open world, the quick battles, the freedom to choose your own path are just a few features that make it feel like they're finally taking that step forward that we've been wanting them to take with this franchise. It doesn't quite feel like Breath of the Wild level change yet, but it does feel like a step towards that. Playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet made me feel the most conflicted I can remember feeling with a video game. While its technical performance leaves a lot to be desired, it's still the best Pokemon game in a very, and I do mean very long time. In fact, if this game ran perfectly, I'd make a case for this being the best Pokemon game of all time. In this show, we practice the 10 games backlog rule. In this practice, you log down 10 games. Those games are going to be your video game backlog. To be as productive as you possibly can be, we recommend that you only play three games at one time. One single player narrative game, one game that's going to be your chill and relax game, and another game that's going to be your palate cleanser game, which is a game that you play when you're not in the mood for your other narrative games. When you complete or get tired of one game, it leaves the backlog list. Then you decide which new game is added to the list, and which game on the list advances to your active three games. So, where should Pokemon Scarlet and Violet fit in your video game backlog? Honestly, this is a game I don't know if I can recommend it, since it feels like it's kind of rewarding bad behavior. I'm conflicted, because on one hand, it is an insanely fun game. 
but on the other hand, it runs so badly that it's a hard game to recommend. If you find it on sale for $30 or less and you like the Pokemon games, then you should buy it. If you're not a Pokemon fan, then definitely skip this one. If you do decide to buy it, I think this game fits perfectly in your primary game slot or your chill and relax spot. It works well in either slots and this is a game you can play for a very long time or it's a game you can kind of pick up and play to kind of relax to. So there's that. So that is the game recommendation of the week that you should consider adding to your backlog list. If you want me or my community of gamers to give you feedback on your backlog list, then join us in the single player experience discord server. Once you're in, feel free to share your video game backlog list or talk about good single player game experiences that you've had lately. The link to join the free single player experience discord server is in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.